Hello friends, welcome back. It is almost summer here and I am in the mood for a beach trip. So in this video, we will be painting a dreamy seascape in watercolor. Let's jump right in. Okay, so to begin, I have printed off a reference photo. This is a photo I took um, at the Outer Banks in North Carolina in Kill Devil Hills a couple of summers ago love 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 the beach it's um almost summer break now so it's time to start thinking all things beach and why not attempt painting a beach scene so let's break down this photograph um just a little We're, it, what we end up painting is not going to be an exact duplicate of this um because we're going to use creative license and artistic license and make our own interpretations kind of as the watercolor does what it does but I see a horizon line about a little more than halfway um, up the page. And then we've got waves breaking a little along the shoreline here. We've got sandy beach here, a little bit of waves here, and this cotton candy sky. And the light's doing a cool thing here. We've got... Um, so the sun is coming from this angle. It's got a little bit of yellow right here to even bring that out even more. So we've got sun coming from this way, but on this side, the, the depth is still this beautiful blue sea green that fades into this pink and purple. A little bit of that right here as well. So I'm gonna move this aside and give myself a rough sketch. I'm using watercolor paper this is a five by five watercolor journal I've been playing around with a little lately, um, getting to know. It's 25% cotton, so uh, we'll see how it does with wet on wet. I haven't tried it for that yet. I've used regular masking tape to just give myself a nice frame. And I'm just gonna very roughly sketch out my horizon line and my uh, shore break line. So I've got my horizon line. Not exactly straight, that's fine. And then my shore break line is gonna kinda come along this way. Okay, that may come to the corner a little more than I want it to. Let's actually let it come there. There we go. There, sketch is done. <laughs> Let's get you guys a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. So I have my palette here. This is my limited palette um, that I've been using for a couple different things. I have a, I believe this is Prussian blue. Um, pretty sure that's Windsor Art Newton Prussian blue. And then yellow ochre and then opera rose. And then all these are just random mixes of the three. So I won't be able to give you exact color recipes as we're working through this, but um, get yourself some yellows, some blues, or a, a blue, a ochre, and um, a magenta or opera rose. And I am going to have my reference photo right up here, just so I can kind of keep an idea of my colors. If you guys want to reference it with me, you can. I also grabbed um, my Dr. Peach Martin's Proof White, Bleed Proof White. Um, that'll come in handy when I get to the, the waves stage. So I'm going to set that to the side for now. I have clean water, and I've got my palette, and I'm using a size 6 round brush. So I'm going to start out. Um, and I'm actually going to wet the whole page, even though we're divided between sky and ocean and shore. Um, everything kind of has this sort of uh, very light purple undertone to it because of the time of day. So I'm going to start by wetting the whole page with my size six. If you have a larger brush, this will go a little faster if you use a larger brush. But really, I just want to get a good wash with clean, wet water. And this will hopefully go quick. 
this painting will come together pretty quickly. Um, if it's particularly humid where you are, you may want to have a drying tool handy, like a, uh, a hair dryer or some sort of heat tool. So you can dry between layers if we need to use it. I don't even know if I'll even use that yet. All right, so if I tilt my paper, check my water consistency. I think I'm looking pretty good there. Basically, we want the water to be glazed um, so that when we start dropping in color, we will get just a nice even wash everywhere. All right, so I'm going to come in. I've got this very light purple that's already mixed up in my palette left over. So if you don't have that, mix you some magenta, a little bit of blue, and I get just a very watery purple first layer down. Let me come in with a little bit more of whatever this is. Okay. Very loose, very wet for sure. Remember with wet and wet technique, we build and build and build. It's a little dark over there. That's okay because the reference photo is as well. Okay. Maybe I'll come and grab a little more pink to add to that. For my sky, I definitely want to get some of that yellow um, down first. Very watery yellow. It's going to kind of swoop in over here a little bit. Kind of strong there. That's okay. And pull in some pinks. Mix up a little more. Very strong there. Okay, while this is, while that part's kind of working on drying, I'm going to come down and start getting the sand a little more in that uh, kind of darkish purple, shadowy purple look right there where it's wet. Okay, Let me pull that up a little more up towards the Sky more. Drop in some greens over here. Remember, well, this is our first layer. So this will kind of all build up as we go. Okay. I'm going to come back over here and bring in more pinks. I'm going to grab some of this copper rose and mix it down. A little more down here. Still wet. So just streak in some more clouds here and there. I'm avoiding that, that yellow. I really want to keep kind of that strong yellow that's happening. I love that when I took the original photo and I love it in the painting. Okay, I want to build up the blue just a little over on this side. That's a little, yeah, that's better.
Okay, and we've got a strong cloud on the reference photo. Strong cloud up here. So I'm going to try this kind of gray line that I've got here. And just dabble in that darker gray a little bit. Maybe build that up a little more. Probably going to come back in and build that up even more as these layers dry. I'll build up this pink a little more. Maybe a little orange. Okay, so while the top dries, again, I'll come back down to the bottom and work in the sandy, purpley, I guess we can call it a wet sand color. Definitely darker than the typical sandy beach, because we're at sunset, dusk actually. And maybe we're a little more pink in the water. And start building in that greenish. Bluish green. Sea green, I'm not sure what we want to call that. Deep end over here. Okay. So that's pretty wet. All right, so I'll leave the bottom half alone. I'll come back up to the top. Drop in some more of those dark clouds here. And that is soaking right into this paper, which I really like because it's giving me some soft blends. Corner a little more blue. Lost some of the pink there. There we go. Actually, I am going to grab my dryer real quick, so let's pause to dry, and I will be back when this has dried. Okay, so the first wash is mostly dry. Paper still feels a little damp, and that's okay. And I'm peeling off some more tape because I want my horizon line where the ocean and the sky meet. Uh, to be very well defined. And so I don't want whatever I do for my sea line to bleed up into the sky. And so since my paper is hopefully dry enough, we'll see, um, this should give me a nice clear division between the two. So I'm going to leave my sky alone, work on my sea to build up these purples and darker greens, and I'm just going to come in strong with this sea green over on the right side. 
a little stronger. Let's test this out. It's looking a little muddy. I'm not sure why. It's probably whatever I had mixed in there before. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, I'm just going to pull that all the way down and all the way across. Work it back up right to my line. This right here is making me a little nervous. I feel like that probably just bled up under the tape a bit. So well, that'll be interesting when I go to take the tape off. Get my pink side blended in with my greens or blues, I should say. Let those blend right together. We've got a little bit of shadow over here where there's a wave breaking. Maybe not quite that much. That's where my waves are going to actually be breaking. I'm going to drop a little bit of green. This is a green. Oop, that's blue. I think let's add some yellow ochre to that to make it a little more sea green for us. Drop some of that green in here, drop some green over here, and there's some here. Definitely got bits of darker purple here and there, so we can blend that right onto the page. And again, I'm going to build up my sandy shoreline down here with a grayish purple. Very watery, very wet. And I think I even want to come on top of this with a light wash of orange. And it's not going to make it look orangey. It's just going to add a little bit of orange tint to that sand. Okay. And again, I'm going to hit it with the dryer and come back with the white and some details. Okay, so let's see what happens when we pull off this tape for my horizon line. <laughs> Look at that. It bled. What can we do to fix that? Let's give it another hard line up there. So we can't exactly make the ocean have a tree line, can we? <laughs> so let's see if I can... Maybe bring my horizon line up a little. There we go. I'm just going to blend that out. The Bob Ross that used to say there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. They don't always make you happy though. <laughs> okay. Um, while I know my sky is very dry, I want to come back in with that gray and get some of those, um, build up this cloud a little bit. And it's a washy light cloud. So I'm just going to kind of dabble my brush with this watery gray just to get some of that. There's a little pink in there. There's a little purple in there. Okay, and then I'm just going to wash my brush off. 
and smooth out the bottom of those just a bit. Top one's a little too harsh, too. And just a little more back here. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to use a different brush. Let me grab. Oh, what do we have here? This is a size zero zero brush. I'm going to use for my white, my crashing waves. Okay, I'm actually going to dip some out and put into the to work from the lid here. A little bit of water. Okay, so my waves are going to crash, kind of, just kind of scramble them in where they're crashing. Pull the brush loose and just let it crash a little bit. Come on over here. Grab some water to thin it out a little bit. A little more water. And this is pretty watered down, so we can get some of that washy sea foam effect going there. I got another big bit of splash happening right here. And it's kind of washing back and forth where the waves are crashing a bit. Just wisps of sea foam that are sticking as the waves wash back. Maybe there's one couple of waves crashing up there a little bit. Maybe right from here. Let's go down a little bit more. Okay. All right. I'm going to use this bleed proof white. I always put my lid right back on because I've had too many accidents where I've either stuck my brush with paint into it or let it dry out too much. Okay, so with my same, that same zero zero size brush, in my reference photo, we can see that right where the waves crash, there's a little bit of shadow coming right under that white bit. So I'm going to add in some of those shadows, some there, some there, just right along that line with a richer blue. I've not used this brush much. It's 
just a cheapy craft brush. Okay. So I'm going to come right along this silhouette. Okay, we're just building in that. That wave that's crashing there. We'll build some up back here as well. Let's see, let's see. Bleed that out a little bit. Bleed that out a bit. Okay. And let's see if I want to add a little more of this sandy color right along the line of this one as well. Okay. And I mean, let's build this up just a little bit more. A little bit of blue and a little bit of that sand color. Let's see how many. Let's go more sandy. Because we're right on that wet sand line. And then just bleed it down. Okay. So there you go, a quick seascape. Let's take off the tape. See how well we held onto the, not so much. If I really want it to be extra <laughs> on this, um, I could come in and paint the border with the blue proof white, but this is just my sketchbook and this was just a practice and a learning experiment for sure. I kind of like that edge. It looks like rugged. Okay, so there we have it. A cotton candy seascape. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to follow along for more videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel or follow along on Instagram at Stacy Chacon. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!